Good evening. Tom and I have known each other for nearly 50 years. It's a few years back. Uh, he's a young college student. He came to Fort Wayne to go to college. And uh, we worked together in a ministry there with uh, uh, delinquent and pre-delinquent kids. And his love for sports and his really caring for needy kids was a winning combination. Uh, we had some great times there. And then when I left Fort Wayne and then he graduated, he joined me in Lansing, Michigan. And we had some in the 70s, and we had some really good times there, too. Uh, once again, the winning combination of, of kids and sports and caring for kids was uh, just the right, uh, right thing to do. Of course, during that time was a special time at MSU, too, with Magic and others. And uh, he got involved uh, quite a bit at Michigan State University and uh, really enjoyed his time there. As time went on and, uh, and on into the 80s, Tom stayed with the organization we were with, which was called Youth for Christ. And he moved on down to uh, Cincinnati and then finally back uh, into Indiana with, uh, in Columbus. And uh, all this time, we kind of stayed in touch and I kept watching what he was doing and uh, seeing that combination of caring about people and, and uh, sports as being something that was really pretty special. Uh, the thing that he really liked, what I saw him doing, was not only liking the sports, but liking the individuals within the sports. Really watching who they were, watching how they interacted, and how sports and their personal lives intersected. That, that is such a, a neat thing to, to know about Tom, and it has led to what he has been doing over these last years in broadcasting. Uh, along the way, uh, as he got those stories and started hearing more and more, uh, he got the idea with others, some of those in the room, that uh, that might be a winning combination to tell those stories, especially those, those stories of where the, the athlete wanted his story told or wanted her story told. And so over the years, he, he tried to find venues for that, which led to the founding and uh, the development of a ministry called Face to Face. And that was in the 90s. Of course, much could be said about the next uh, 24 years and uh, all that has transpired during that time. Uh, but as one of his friends over all those years and one of the board members, uh, as I watched him in the ministry of Face to Face, I think the uh, thing that I would say about him tonight as he comes up to share a little bit is there are three words that uh, I think really characterize who Tom is. Partnership, pastor, and professional. In a partnership thing, as I've already said, he was looking for opportunities uh, for athletes to have a way to tell their story, but they couldn't do it on their own. And that's where that partnership came in. And he gave them a voice through his interviews. Uh, to date, Tom has partnered with over 450 athletes from all levels of various sports and various locations. He's given them the opportunity to share their background, their challenges, their experiences, their testimonies and really had the opportunity to uh, let them share their dreams that would not have been possible without his partnership. Of course, partnership goes beyond the athletes because he's not a lone wolf. And so early on, he formed a board, and mentioned many of us are here tonight that have been on the board the whole time. And uh, those partners have been those who have helped keep him accountable to what he was doing and keep, his, keep him on mission. Of course, the partnership also includes his family. And Bev's here, and uh, members of his family, and uh, that partnership is also reflected in that. Uh, so the partnership word really is very high in the words that describe who Tom is, uh, the partnership with a lot of people, which leads to the other word, the next word, which is pastor. And yes, he does have a pulpit, and uh, I think he's doing a sunrise service tomorrow morning, and if he comes out, he can practice on you tonight, and you know, he can do a sort of... <laughs> I think, uh, I think we'll wrap up so that, that he can get on and do this final brush up to be ready for that. I think some of this congregation are even here with, with him tonight. But uh, it's, he is a pastor. Uh, he's had many opportunities in the pastoral role. Uh, he served as chaplain for IU basketball, which is a great honor and a great uh, experience that he had. He continues uh, early on, on as we watch the face to face broadcasting going on. Uh, it became pretty clear that the real issue about face-to-face -face was the individuals. And he became chaplain at large to many of them. 
So there's a text going to the dugout. Uh, there's a, a hurried word. There's something from scripture that really hits right home at the right time. There's time of crisis, and uh, Tom's on the phone. Uh, there's times of, uh, we do our marriage, and uh, he's, he's performed a lot of marriages. So he, he is pastor to very many people. In fact, when Tom uh, makes his report to the board about this aspect of it, he calls it his congregation. And there's this core group of those 450 that still look to him as kind of the chaplain, the pastor that he, that he is. But while Tom has many unique abilities and uh, characteristics as a uh, minister over the many years, uh, your acknowledgement of him tonight uh, joins us as a board and others to uh, recognize the fact that he truly is a professional boy. As I said, he skillfully recorded over 450 interviews with athletes from majors and minor leagues, uh, the amateurs, many sports, many locations. Those uh, interviews are currently heard on 10 radio stations and on the internet. He really, really, really delights in the play-by-play -play calls that he has the opportunity to do uh, in broadcasting, and uh, that's a very special part of what he does. And he continues to write uh, more and more in the blogging and some articles. Uh, that he has been able to put together. In fact, he's written some tracks, taking some testimonies, and really giving, once again, the voice to some major athletes about the, a story that they wanted really clearly told in a professional way. So that writing aspect is, is still emerging and continuing to grow. So tonight, I am very proud of Tom, and I'm very honored to introduce to you a pastor, a partner, and a professional broadcaster, Tom Russell. Shinsky, big tackle, 
on the Michigan State football team, and uh, he said, I'll help you get some players. And Bert Smith was the athletic director at Michigan State University, and he said, I'll let you use the room in the stadium. And before long, we had a, uh, a Friday morning time together with athletes, and uh, in an incredible moment for me, in 1976, just a few years after we got this started, Michigan State Student Varsity Club gave me an honorary Michigan State letter. I, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that anything like that would happen. But I know that uh, broadcasting had pretty much fallen away since my days of uh, playing with those baseball cards on the floor. As a career, baseball broadcasting was not on my radar. But as a little boy, as I said, I used to mimic broadcasters. I used to kind of want to be the broadcaster more than I wanted to be a player. And I had some favorites. I loved listening to Mel Allen, Wade Hoyt. I loved to watch the TV. Dizzy Dean and Buddy Blatter. Remember those days? That goes back a little ways, right? Dizzy Dean and Buddy Blatter. But my two favorites were the Cleveland Indians announcers, Ken Coleman and Jimmy Dudley. And I love Ken Coleman and Jimmy Dudley. Uh, uh, me and there were about 10 other people in the United States listening to the Cleveland Indians in the late 1950s. But uh, I still, I'm one of the few guys that could name, and I can't do it tonight, and I won't take your time, but I can name a starting line for the Cleveland Indians in 1959. I mean, I know about guys like John Romano and Max Alvis and people like that. And it, it, I never considered broadcasting as a career. I never thought that was going to be anywhere on my radar. But many years later, 1985, I went to uh, Columbus, Indiana to start Youth for Christ, to start the Youth for Christ program. And I met this guy, Tom Gross, who was the play-by-play -play voice for Tri-WY. And I didn't realize Tri-WY was kind of, a, kind of a neat little station. Uh, a couple of other people came out of there. Uh, Walt Ferber was with Tri-WY. Chris Denary came out of Tri-WY. And uh, Tom Gross and I did... Uh, did basketball and football, and uh, I got to tell you how I got started. Uh, Tom Gross had as a partner a guy named Lou Giovanini. Lou Giovanini, baseball guy who had just went into the Indiana Baseball uh, Hall of Fame recently, and uh, in fact, they just named the Lou Giovanini Invitational in Columbus just this uh, just a week ago. Lou Giovanini was uh, fiery, kind of a fiery guy. Not the type of guy you'd actually want, I think, for color commentator, maybe. <laughs> You know, uh, he probably had a tendency to say some things, uh, you know, that were a little, little tough. Well, anyway, Lou left, and Tom Gross did not have a color commentator, and the connection between Tom Gross and I was, was that our wives worked together in a bank. And uh, we're playing golf one day, and somebody said, hey, Tom, who's going to be your new color commentator? And he said, this guy right here. And uh, I looked at him like, I don't even know kind of which end of the mic you're supposed to hold, you know, and he said, oh, it's nothing, you know, we talk about sports all the time, and now you're just going to do it with the mic in your hand. <laughs> and that's the way I got started in 1985. And the story was we were doing a game at Brown County. We were doing a Brown County game with uh, Bloomington North, I believe, and I believe they had Pat Knight on the team, if I can remember right. And Tom Gross was doing the, the, uh, the first quarter, and he completely lost his voice. He lost his voice. He had no voice. And so he looked at me and he goes, you're on. <laughs> and that was the first game I did as a play-by-play -play commentator. And uh, Tom and I worked together for a number of years. And then I, uh, that was the start. And then uh, some strange things happened, two strange things. In 1990, a very strange thing happened. I was working on my master's at Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. We decided to go to a, a Cubs game with a friend of mine named Gary McCoy. Gary's over here with the uh, camera. And Gary and I were sitting in the left field stands at Wrigley Field on the uh, in a game of the Los Angeles Dodgers on the first game after the All-Star game in 1990. And uh, Kirk Gibson was the left fielder. And Kirk and I had known each other at Michigan State. And one of the things that uh, I, Gary and I started talking about was the fact, you know, there's a disconnect. Kirk Gibson is hardly any, any distance from me. And he knows me and I know him, but I can't talk to him. And it was almost like the Lord sent a message to me that said, that's the way it is with some Christian athletes. <laughs> and Gary and I that night, I'm glad Gary's here because he can attest to that fact, that we decided that we needed to start something. And I just felt a passion from that night on to try to give a voice to Christian athletes. But I had a problem. I didn't have a station. <laughs> I didn't have any way to do it. And uh, I came back and I prayed about it. And uh, I went to a station, WRZQ, and there was a guy there named Keith Rising who was uh, over here. And uh, I decided to walk in 
and asked Keith Rising if I, I remember I went up to Keith and I said, Keith, I've got an idea, and he didn't even know it. It was a complete cold call. And I went in and I said, Keith, I got an idea. I'd like to go national with a show in which I interview Christian athletes. And I'm sure he looked at me with kind of a, <laughs> kind of a, uh, are you kidding me? Who are you? <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, also, by the way, would you like to do have somebody do play by play for you at ARCQ? And he said, as a matter of fact. I've been thinking about that, and I told Keith the other day, if he would have said no, if he would have said no, we would not have had this moment tonight. I would not be here. So Keith, my uh, big thanks is to you and to, uh, to Mike King, who sits next to him. Keith and Mike King, two big thanks that I have. Those guys have directed me in, in that way. And so uh, that's what's been happening in the last few years. It's been an amazing ride. I've had some very special people who are here tonight to thank uh, I want to thank, uh, uh, first of all, Harry McCoy, who was with me there in that epiphany in left field. I want to thank uh, the members of my board who are here. Some of them are here tonight, some are not. Dave Ketchum is here, and Dave's been a, a very close friend. Uh, Dick Epps, who, who is over here. Ken Conrad, another longtime friend. We played basketball together back at uh, Fort Wayne Bible College back in the, in the uh, 60s, quite a while ago. And uh, I remember that there was a time, I believe it was in... Uh, I believe it was in Nashville about 1992 or 1993 that we got together in a room and I told these guys, I said, guys, I would like to see if we can really make this thing happen. Let's, let's not just do it as an interview show, but let's pull together as a ministry, as a board. And uh, God has really blessed us. As, as you've read and as you've seen, there's been over 450 athletes. Uh, we've done over a thousand shows. Uh, we do a number of repeat interviews because some of the interviews are, uh, most interviews are, are really ones that you can that you can have uh, more than one time, and so people have heard that. And uh, and also play by play. Keith and Mike have put up with me, particularly Mike, and uh, our time about what games to do, uh, being on the road or being at home, and uh, come close to a thousand broadcasts of play by play for Columbus North and Columbus East and Hauser. And along the way, it's been tremendous of having the opportunity to. To do games at Lucas Oil Stadium and in Market Square Arena, but uh, it's just been a great time. And uh, and also along the way, of course, I've become a pastor. And I want to recognize two of my great friends who have come here from the church tonight, uh, from John and, and Betty Evans, who drove over here. And uh, I want to thank them for for their support, and also for the color commentators that I've had along the way. I've had many. Uh, and I've had people who have helped me out with face-to-face, -face. a guy that couldn't be here tonight, but who, again, I think has been a part of this whole mix, is a guy named Jim Bergen. Jim Bergen was my volunteer producer for, for over 20 years. For 20 years he did the show put together, because I really didn't have any way to get the show on the air. And it's a long story, and I'm not going to get into it, as to how in the world it ever got into the mix of being actually on the air. But Jim Bergen, at one time said, who produces your show? And I said, well, I'm going to try to produce it. And I didn't know anything about producing. And Jim said, I'll do it for you. And for 20 years, as a volunteer, I would give the interview and a beginning and a closing to Jim, and he would put the show together. And he did that for over 20 years. As I said, there's a lot of different people that I'd like to thank. i got one story i got to tell, which is kind of the funniest story. It involves Sam. Uh, John Nickel was one of my broadcast partners. He was supposed to be here tonight, but he had a, uh, a child that was sick and he couldn't come. Uh, we did all kinds of games, and, and I didn't know a whole lot about broadcasting. I just learned as you kind of came along. And a uh, regional game in Milan uh, a few years ago, a regional game, uh, I'm not sure even who played. I think it might have been Hauser and Jackson Nell were playing. And at the time, we used a bag phone. We had a mast and we put a cell phone antenna on top of the mast and shot the signal back and it wasn't really very good. We got to Milan, packed house, and there was no place for us to broadcast. So we took it into the stands and Sam was sitting on the other end and Sam uh, reminds me every once in a while of the Milan game. Sam was uh, looking down there. We're sitting there, John Nickel had the uh, bag phone and was holding the mast with this big cell phone antenna, and we called that game, and I believe that that Hauser Jackson Dell game was something like 102 to 98 or something like that. But that's been, uh, again, you think about that and you think about all the various opportunities that, uh, that I've had, and I just am so thankful for the, for the ISSA. I'm so thankful for all the different people that I've had a chance to meet, and I go back to that Robin Yount 
uh, Robin Young's statement of being surrounded by so many great players. There are so many great players in this room, and it's, it's really a privilege to uh, to to uh, to come behind Tracy and uh, to be a part of history here tonight. And uh, I just want to say thanks to my family also that's here. I want to say thanks to my sister Judy and her husband Mike who are here who come in from Ohio. Uh, my brother Edward is here who drove in from his uh, military base in Fort Drum, New York. And uh, finally, finally, the most special person in my life who was here, my wife Bev, who I'm certain when she married me in uh, 2002 had no idea what she was getting into. Uh, it's like anything when you get into sports, it's, it's crazy. Again, I want to thank the committee for choosing me. I am incredibly honored, and uh, I give God all the glory. Thank you very much.